Okay, it's 12.49, so we're going to need to get back in session. Okay, so the uh, next item before us is F19, no more retros, on page 55 of the agenda. Oh, right, that's on this page. Um, my agenda has come in two pieces at this point, so. Um, okay, I am recommending... A debate time of six minutes to this. Is there any objection to six minutes? Hearing none, debate is six, set at six minutes. Is one of the proposers in the room and wish to speak to it? Mixed chairperson, my name is Kent Bloom, and uh, I don't believe we have a reason to continue to give out retro Yugos. I've been, in addition to the arguments that pr were presented in the agenda. I have been embarrassed for a number of different reasons by a number of hu retro Hugos that have been given out. And I know that other people have been embarrassed by some of them for other reasons than mine. I am particularly concerned that no Worldcon would have given the retro Hugo that they were, um, that, 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 there was being, that is being attributed to them. Uh, and the s sense of hindsight that we have is, frankly, very poor and, fr frankly, very colored. Uh, it d it, 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 things do not look the same to us as they did to us in, in, in 1950s or 40s, and uh, they definitely don't look the same as they will in the future. I think we're not qualified to do this. I think we're not appropriate for us to do this. And I think we should remove them from our Constitution. Okay, that was the speech in favor. For what purpose does the member rise? Okay, so in case you weren't here earlier, I'm going to ask that people not pop up until after I've asked for a speech against so that I can see if people are wishing to make privileged motions. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? And I will recognize the member in the red. David Hook. Um, I have mixed feelings about this, but I do feel that this uh, particular proposal is unnecessary. Um, even though the percentage of people that are nominating and voting on these retro Hugos has dropped dramatically since they were first, first done from 25% down to about 8% last time around, it's unnecessary because the world cons are already voting with their feet. The last three that could have done it have just decided not to do it, and they can continue not to do that. Um, so I do think this is an unnecessary thing to do, and for that reason, I oppose it. That was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Okay, in the front. Kevin Stanley, he, him, mixed chairperson. The late Bruce Pells, who many of you know and some of you don't, but because Bruce has been gone a while now. The late Bruce Pells was the primary mover behind the retro Hugos. He initially, as I recall from having discussed it with him while they were working through this, really wanted to just give one Worldcon an opportunity to do this. And it, they concluded that the only e way to do it legitimately was to create it generally. But clearly, for those of you who have read The Moon is a Harsh Mistress and sound this phrase elsewhere, Bruce very much said, and I believe he spoke in debate saying this, that this is a funny once. And we've gone well past the, the use-by of this, and I think it's time to retire it. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? I recognize in the purple. My name is Cora Bulot, and um, I'm actually the proposer of F20. So I guess we can maybe, maybe I can maybe make this speech also the speech in favor of F20. And um, for those of you who know me, I've done a lot of work for the Retro Hugos because I was frustrated by bad winners, by weak stories from future stars winning, winning by things winning or by racist Wonder Woman comics winning. 
winning, and so I decided to make the Retro Hugo better. I started a project to review as many eligible works for, in that case it was 1944, as possible. And um, those, and I reviewed more than 35 stories, found a lot of interesting works, works and um, got other people to join me and hope to raise some interest in the Retro Hugos. And uh, I actually feel as if all my hard work has been in vain in favor of the Retro Hugos because uh, basically people who never gave a damn, pardon my language, about them before, suddenly decided the Retro Hugos were very bad, very racist and everything because people voted for John W. Campbell, yes. I, I mean, he's almost impossible to beat but, uh, beat, but maybe they could have thrown their weight behind someone else. I threw mine behind Dorothy McElray's of Weird Tales. And also as, um, also as um, Dave Hook said, this motion is completely unnecessary because all world cons already have the freedom not to do the retro yugos if they choose not to. And I want to retain this freedom for the, for the world cons because I know retro yugos are a lot of work for the Hugo administration team. They cost money for the trophies and the, and the ceremony. And uh, there's often no one to give these trophies to. And I'm not sure if we even need trophies. But I think we should retain the ability for Worldcon to host Retro Hugos should they wish to do so. Do so because uh, our for we wouldn't be here without the writers, the fans, the artists who worked in the 1930s, 40s, 50s, 50s. They are our forebearers, and I think we deserve to honor them, especially Ten if the... Ten seconds. Sorry. Ten seconds. Especially if the regular Hugos never got around to him. Also, I'm really sorry for gumming up the business meeting with this, with, uh, but the other proposal forced me to. Thank you very much. Okay, that was a speech against. Is there anybody wishing to speak in favor? Okay, in the back, right... My right, your left. Yes, you, Gareth. Gareth Kavanagh, he, him. I have long considered placing this motion onto the body. I do think that the retro Yugos, while a fun little thing, have quite a strong impression. It is almost impossible for us to say what works would have won the Yugo in the year. And often we are not voting on the works that are relevant, but by, for the career of the person that came years afterwards. It is unrepresentative and it is just not good. Thank you. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Time. What? Yeah, time against has elapsed. Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Uh, in the blue, 20 seconds? 28 seconds. East, Jill Eastlake, Mix Chairman. I ran the Retro Hugo presentation show in 2004. One, comma, one of the nominees showed up. And he told me that he thought that the Retro Hugos should not be done. And I said, yeah, well, we're going to have a nice ceremony anyway, but I agree. Time, that was a speech uh, in favor. Uh, time for debate has elapsed. And so if there are no other matters, we will move to a vote. It's been moved to dispend, extend debate by one minute on each side. Is there a second? Hearing none, debate is not extended. No, Kent was making sure I knew that one times two was two. Um, is there, is, does the person on the side have something for me? They should bring it up. Um, okay, are we ready to move to a vote? Thank fucking God. <laughs> okay, I've needed that. Okay, we're gonna move to a vote. All those in favor of F-19, no more retros, please raise the hand. Thank you. 
Thank you. All those against? Okay, and the motion passes and F-19 is adopted. Given that F-19 has been adopted, F-20 would no longer be in order as it just... I guess that's true. We could ratify one and not the other. I guess it would really be Seattle at which they couldn't do both. Okay, never mind. We'll take up F-20. Um, cool. Okay, the item now before us is F.20. I'm going to recommend a debate time of six minutes for this. Is there any objection to six minutes? Hearing none, debate is set at six minutes. Yes. Nope, these are new constitutional changes. They are not ratifications. Okay, does the maker of the motion, I know the maker of the motion kind of spoke in favor of it already, but do you wish to speak in favor of it additionally, or do you wish one of your fellow proposers to? Okay. Yep, I'll recognize Chris Barkley for a speech in favor. Chris Barkley, he, him. Uh, Ms. Chairperson, it seems unnecessary for the prior motion to have passed, but it passed. All I have to say is this, A, let us complete the job. Let us complete what needs to be completed. And B, see you in Seattle. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay, hold on. The question was a motion to postpone indefinitely and if it was too late. It is not too late. Object to consideration is the only thing that has to happen immediately. Postpone indefinitely does not. However, postpone indefinitely is not a privileged motion and I was about to recognize the person in the check. So I'm going to recognize the person in the plaid and vest. A motion to amend would be in order. Yes, and I believe uh, the head table has the uh, text of the amendment here. Name? Oh, name David Wallace or Dave Wallace. Uh, he, him, and uh, basically I, I move to amend by adding an additional section to this, um, which is intended to allow extra time for voters to consider retrospective Hugos by allowing a convention to delegate to the previous convention the nominations so that nominations can be done a year in advance of the retro Hugos, therefore allowing uh, an extra year essentially for people to consider the retro Hugos outside of the time when they're trying to do the regular Hugo reading, which is basically crowded out all the time. And I think that is one of the issues here. So basically. Uh, <laughs> okay, we're going to have a brief standing pause while we work on getting that slide ready. Sure. Um, you did send it to us in advance, and it, there's a lot of emails that have come into business meeting that in the past few days, and we just missed getting a slide made. So, one moment. Okay. Sorry, Google Slides just froze. <laughs> Give us one moment. Yep. Okay, we know that the text is small. The parliamentarian is working on editing it. 
Um, I'm going to read the full text while the parliamentarian works on it. Um, so this is to add an additional section, 3.14.3, .3, that reads, in order to allow extra time for voters to consider retrospective Hugo works, a Worldcon that chooses to host retrospective year Hugo Awards may choose, with the consent of the previous seated Worldcon, to, to delegate the nomination of retrospective finalists to that previous seated Worldcon. In that case, the previous Worldcon will conduct the nominations and announce the finalists with the same procedures and eligible nominators as used for their own Hugo nominations. The host Worldcon will conduct the final award voting for the retrospective Hugo Awards at the same time and with the same voters as their own Hugo Award final award voting. The publication of the final rounds of the finalist selection procedure for the retrospective Hugo Awards may be published by either Worldcon in accordance with their own publication of such data for the regular Hugos as established by agreement between them. If the two Worldcons are not able to agree on the delegation of retrospective nominations to the previous Worldcon, then the host Worldcon will conduct nominations in accordance with its own Hugo procedures. Is there a second? second. There is a second. I understand that the text is small, but given that I read it and that the text is on the screen, do you feel that you have an understanding of the amendment? Okay. How much time is we have... Well, we had one speech, so presumably we have basically all the time. So th this is an amendment, so the total time for debate is five minutes split evenly. Do you wish to speak to your amendment? Yes. Please do. Thank you. Basically, my argument is, if uh, given that there are people that want to finish out the remaining seven or possibly eight years of the retrospective Hugos, if we're going to do it, let's do it right. Let's make it possible to make the retrospective Hugos the best retrospective Hugos we can. And I had three amendments to the retrospective Hugos to propose next year. This is the only one that really needs to happen this year. And the reason is because in order for this, if F, uh, F20 were to pass, the first eligible year would be the 1947 Hugos. It would be ratified next year in 2015. And if we make, if we attach this as the amendment, they, the and the 2017, uh, 2027 convention, which would be the first one to hold the the uh, for 47 Hugos, wanted to do this, they could immediately ask the LA, which, which we now know to be the 26th convention, if they would please hold the nominations for them. Uh, otherwise, we we couldn't fit this in within the uh, ratification deadlines. The other two things can wait, uh, the, but. Again, my, my intention is to make this the best possible retrospective Hugos we can. I know they need work. I think this would make a big difference because I think the biggest single thing in the problems with the retro Hugos is that they are direct, the reading for them is directly in conflict with the regular Hugos, with all the additional stuff that we've passed, the, the additional t categories, the additional nominees in each categories. There's less and less time for people to actually read the retrospective Hugos. So they do things like vote for the one author they recognize, e even if that's you know somebody who's not representative. The one retrospective Hugos that I, in my time at Worldcon, which started in 2015, that I thought really worked was the 2016 retro Hugos. And I realized, looking back at that, that part of the reason why I felt they really worked was because there was so much crap on the regular Hugo ballot that year I had plenty of time to do the reading for the retrospective Hugos, and therefore was able to get a good perspective of what the nominees were. So I urge you to pass this so that we can make the retrospective Hugos the best that we possibly can. Okay, time in favor of the amendment has elapsed. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the amendment? Oh, okay, you okay? I am gonna recognize uh, Nicholas White behind you, though. <laughs> Sorry to make you re-stand up again. Thank you, mixed person, mix, mixed chairperson. Sorry, <laughs> um, Nicholas White. He him. Um, I have administered the retro Hugo several times 
in 2020, 2021, if uh, memory, possibly even 2019. I, I lose track slightly. Yes, I think all three years. Um, the problem with the retro Hugos is not the lack of reading time. To be honest, if you give Wispus voters a uh, hundred days, they will read everything the last five days, and you give them 300 days, they will read everything the last five days. That's not the issue. Uh, the issue is that the level of interest in the retro Hugos has been gradually decreasing. Um, I frankly don't think that we needed to have taken time up at this meeting to discuss how they could be improved. Um, I don't particularly like the current arrangement. I don't really see that uh, there are tweaks that are going to make it much better. I'd much rather leave things be and leave it to the discretion of individual world cons. And folks, if we really wanted to free up the, the reading time that voters have to consume everything that is in front of the Hugos, we would be abolishing best series and not tinkering with the retros. Thank you. The last section was not germane. Um, <laughs> Give back five seconds of time. Um, time in favor has elapsed. Is there own, anyone else wishing to speak against? Is the person in the back wishing to speak or just standing? I think you're just standing. Wait, that's fine. I just needed to know. Is there anybody else wishing to speak against? I think that was a wave and not wishing to speak against, but just for clarity. <laughs> Try not to make sudden movements when I'm asking for speeches. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay. Okay, then you can come make it. Todd Dashoff, he, him. Uh, well, Mr. White mm, substantively made the points I was going to make about the fact of the reading time and the fact that you still have problems in what you have to read. Uh, I believe that this amendment unduly burdens the... Pr I understand that there's a chance that they don't need to, but I think that putting all of the negotiating into the previous world... Look at them. Look at them, oh, not sorry. at me. Negoti putting all the time into the previous world con to decide if they can indeed handle this job that might be dumped on them is unnecessary. Okay, that was a speech against. How much time is remaining against? Uh, we have one minute and eight seconds remaining against. Okay, time in favor has elapsed. Is there anybody else wishing to speak against the amendment? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of the amendment, which is to add the text on the screen to the end of F.20, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, thank you. And the amendment is not adopted. We are back to F20 as before us in the agenda. We have a bit of time remaining on both sides. Yes, one moment. Okay. We have 41 seconds remaining in favor and two minutes, 11 seconds remaining against. Okay. Is there one, anyone, are you, do you rise for a privileged motion? Oh, wait, wait, um, sorry, the second time I did it incorrect. I apologize. It's been a long business meeting for me, too. Your mic is off. Oh, yes. So you're, do you just need to update the time? No, I just need okay. To update the for what purpose do you rise? Just to call the question. You want to call the question, and it's been seconded. Okay. Is there anybody wishing to speak on F20 for any purpose, including making amendments? Yes. Okay, so we will move to a vote on calling the question. This requires a two-thirds vote and will close debate as well as the making of any subsidiary amendments. All those in favor of calling the question, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, thank you. And the question is called and debate is ended and we will move to a vote on F20. All those in favor of F20, save the retro Hugos, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, thank you. And the motion is defeated and is not adopted. I will now recognize Mr. Dunn for a motion. Next chair, Cliff Dunn, he, him. I sincerely apologize to the body for making this, but in light of the Hugo 
voting statistics published last night, I move to reconsider the extension granted to Godzilla minus one. Okay, you've made a motion to reconsider, which would not be in order given that, I, I know, but let me explain why. That would not be in order given that we did that on the first day and it's been more than one day since then. So I believe that you are wishing to suspend the rules to do so. Yes, and I'm just exhausted as well. <laughs> no, that's fine. So a motion to suspend the rules requires a two thirds vote. The motion to reconsider requires a majority vote. Also, I don't believe the member voted on the prevailing side, so, but we're gonna wrap that into the suspension. So we are first going to vote on the suspension of the rules, which requires a two thirds vote and is neither debatable nor amendable. Let me finish what I'm saying and then I'll recognize you. If the suspension of the rules passes, then we will vote on whether or not to reconsider the item. Then if we vote in favor of reconsidering the item, then we will vote on the item after presumably some debate. For what purpose did the member in the back rise? Okay, so the maker of the ori original motion wishes to speak in favor of the reconsideration. I will note that the motion to suspend the rules is not debatable, but if we get to reconsideration, we'll take that up. Okay. So the, I, what is before us is the motion to suspend the rules to allow us to do the rest of this and reconsider F dot something, the Hugo eligibility extension for the thing about Godzilla. Okay, all those in, look, I don't have the entire agenda memorized. Shocking. Um, all those in favor of suspending the rules, please raise the hand. Okay, thank you. All those against, and the motion passes, especially with all the extra hands that went up during the time for voting. Okay, so the motion to suspend the rules has passed, and so what is now before us is reconsideration of F dot, or D, yeah, D dot four. Okay, this requires a majority vote. I'm going to set debate on the reconsideration since the motion to reconsider can get into debate on the underlying matter, I'm going to say that the total debate time for the reconsideration and the item should the reconsideration pass, it, pass will be two minutes with the fours and the yeses and nos sort of the same on both matter. Is there any objection to two minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at two minutes. Does the maker of the motion to reconsider wish to speak in favor? Or do they wish to cede to? Okay, I will recognize the member in the back for a speech in favor of reconsideration. Thank you, Mix Chairperson. Uh, my name is Olav Rockney, pronouns he, him. And I never make extension of eligibility motions spuriously or frivolously. And uh, Cora and I worked on this together. And uh, we did not have all of the data available to us. And knowing that it did get a fair shake in uh, this year's Hugo's, I, who moved this, am in favor of undoing it. That was a speech in favor of reconsideration. Is there anybody wishing to speak against? Yes? Okay, the motion, it's been moved and seconded to call the question on all matters before us. Is there anyone still wishing to speak on either reconsideration or should reconsideration pass D.4? Seeing none, we will move to a vote on both matters. The first question that is before us is reconsideration of D.4. So what that means is that if you want to vote again on D.4, regardless of which side you want to vote on, you would vote yes for reconsideration. You would vote no if you do not wish to vote again on D.4. Are we clear? Okay. All those in favor of reconsidering D.4, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, thank you. And the motion passes. And so what is before us is D.4 which was previously adopted. 
there was the nobody was wishing to speak and so we are moving straight to a vote so all those and so to be clear this was the eligibility extension for gojiro 1.0 aka godzilla minus one all those in favor of the hugo eligibility extension for this piece please raise the hand thank you all those against thank you and d.4 is now defeated I believe that concludes everything we have before us. Before I entertain a motion to adjourn CNA Dae, I have some announcements and some thanks to give. So I'm gonna do that first. Okay, here we go. As I said at the beginning of the meeting, if you are interested in joining the Hugo uh, study group or the business meeting study group, please email your interest to business meeting at glasgow2024.org by 5 p.m. BST on Friday. We will pass along your interest to the chair of that committee or chairs of those committees and acknowledge the receipt of your email. You should not expect to get that acknowledgement until probably like Thursday at the earliest because we have lives and homes to get back to. Let's see. Uh, right, okay. So as I stated previously, the video recordings from the live stream, I believe are already available for replay on the member portal. I apologize for the delay in that happening. We also have the recordings to be uploaded and published to the Worldcon events page. In addition, the recordings that Lisa Hayes has been making are currently available at least the first three days on Kevin Stanley's personal YouTube page. If you would like that address, go talk to Kevin and he can get it to you. Okay, those are all the announcements. Okay, thanks, I have a lot of them. First of all, I wanna thank the hotel staff who have been amazing to work with and very flexible, um, and especially to the chef and the staff for figuring out a way to help get us fed so that we could get through this agenda. So thank you to them. Related, I want to thank Kevin Sonny, Kevin Stanley, and Cliff Dunn for helping to provide the coffee and tea services on various days. I want to thank our captioning services, the name of the company of which I should remember but don't. Uh, three Play. I want to thank our captioners from Three Play who have been. Uh, I mean, I'm not seeing it most of the time, but I understand they're generally doing quite a good job. So I wanna thank them so much for their service, especially given all of the fun jargon we use. I wanna thank Kate Secor and the other Discord recorders for their efforts in helping to keep folks who aren't here um, up on what is happening via text communication in the Discord channel. I wanna thank Lisa Hayes for doing some additional video recording. Okay, I wanna thank Ron Oakes for helping out with the AV tech um, and also Alan Bond who helped out on the first day. Um, so thank you so much. I wanna thank Linda Deneroff who stepped up at the literal last minute to be our secretary when Alex Axe was no longer able to be with us, and so thank you so much. Unfortunately, even when we try to give you the year off, it apparently doesn't happen, so. Um, and then further, I would like to thank the rest of my staff. I have said many times over the past several months to Warren and Alex and Martin, Martin and Ira and Jared that, well, and Chris, although it's not actually applicable to Chris, that they did not sign up for this. None of us knew what the agenda for this meeting was going to look like when we agreed to take on this role. And for many of them, this is their first time at the head table or being on business meeting staff. I am so incredibly glad to have the team that I have had for this year. I cannot imagine doing it with a different team. I cannot imagine having gotten through it without these folks. And so for my entire staff, I extend my sincerest and most profuse thanks. I could not have done this without you.
would like unanimous consent to a motion to thank the chair, who has done a spectacular job under unimaginable circumstances. Thank you. I appreciate it. And um, I'm very glad to have been able to help guide you all through this 20-hour process. Let's never, ever do it again. <laughs> and at that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn sine die. I am aware. I was going to say the last part. Okay. So having heard it from like 15 of you, if there is no objection, we will adjourn sine die. Donnelly Slakey him. I'd like to uh, remind people that there'll be a Mark Protection Committee meeting in this room, delayed from the originally scheduled time on the calendar due to the extensive uh, business here. So we'll be meeting at 1.45 uh, in this room for the Mark Protection Committee, which is open to all WISFIS members. Thank you. I'm sorry. I have a long list, and I just missed that on my notes. Okay. So I'm going to try and get through this. We are gonna we're gonna adjourn CNA die in honor of Deb Geisler, and that concludes this year's business meeting.